JavaScript is an exciting language you can use to power web servers, create desktop programs, even control robots. But JavaScript got its start in the browser way back in 1995. It was created to make web pages responsive to mouse clicks and other input from visitors. And even though it's a popular old proposed programming language, you still find that JavaScript is the most important tool you have for creating fun, interactive, and useful websites. Starting from this lecture, you'll learn how to bring web pages to life using the power of JavaScript. So first up, let's take a look at a few examples of how JavaScript lets you create interactive web pages that respond to a user actions. First, let's check out this interactive calculator. Clicking a number button makes that number appear in this display. So I'm going to add 10 plus 10 and hit equal and the number 20 appears. So this is what I mean by interactivity. When the page loads, JavaScript code tells the browser to listen for button clicks and perform math in response to those clicks. Then it alters the display to show that result as it's finished. Now let's have a look at this fun interactive website called kobay.es. You can find the link from the description below. After the page loads, If I move the mouse from right to left, from left to right, from bottom to top, and from top to bottom, all the contents in the main content area will also move accordingly. If I click this button, first it updates the page view then display different image and text content on every three seconds. So now we can start to see how JavaScript can make websites more engaging and applicable to use. Let's look at one more example, the Google Sheets. This is an example of a full blown application in a web page. You can type information into cells. You can right click on cells to bring up various formatting options such as copy and a paste, adding or deleting rows and cells, and even more. All this interactivity is accomplished with JavaScript, which is listening for actions like clicks, and then updating what we see based on those actions. Starting from this lecture, you'll learn how to make your own static page interactive with JavaScript. We can actually break the interactivity into three basic actions, such as selecting elements on the page, manipulating elements, and listening for user actions. For example, this calculator app we looked at has many keys, and each key is a separate element. To know when someone is clicking on key 3 and not on key 9, for example, you first have to use JavaScript to find all those key elements, and sort out which one is which. This process is called selection. Once you have an element selected, you can manipulate it in some way. You can think about this website I mentioned earlier. After the page loads, If I move the mouse from right to left, from left to right, from bottom to top, and from top to bottom, all the contents in the main content area will also move accordingly. If I click this button, first it updates the page view then display different image and text content on every three seconds. In other words, all these elements were being manipulated. But remember, not all elements you select can be manipulated. Often, you want an element to listen to what the user is doing. Think of the spreadsheet we looked at earlier. Once a cell is selected, we want to know what the user types. So we can put that data into the cell. In other words, 
By listening to the keyboard action, we can update the elements property. These three actions are happening in all of the interactive examples we just looked at. So in the upcoming lectures, you will learn how to take control of your web page by accessing, interacting and manipulating something called document object model.